from the seat of a wheelchair on That's Incredible. Tomorrow at 7, 6 Central the Mountain, and Monday at 8, 7 Central. We now continue with the Richie Rich Scooby and Scrappy Doo Show. Boy, this sure The third ranked Seminoles of Florida State. And this ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Natural Light Beer. Taste is why you'll switch to Natural Light. Buy your Sears Tire and Auto Center, home of straight talk, good values, and satisfaction. And by Hertz, the superstar in Rent-A-Car. It's a beautiful day, temperature in the 70s in Tallahassee. Hello again, everybody. I'm Al Michaels, and welcome to a great intrastate rivalry, a great battle, not only as far as the intrastate aspect of it is concerned, but as far as Florida State is concerned today, they have national championship aspirations. For Florida State to wind up as the mythical national champion, the following scenario would have to take place. Georgia, ranked number one, would have to lose in the Sugar Bowl on New Year's Day to Notre Dame. Notre Dame, meanwhile, in addition to winning that game, would have to lose today. Notre Dame still with one game left on its regular season schedule. The Fighting Irish today to take on the University of Southern California. You'll see that game as the second half of our ABC NCAA doubleheader from the Los Angeles Coliseum. If that takes place, of course, it's all academic if Florida State doesn't win its next two. The Seminoles must win today against Florida to finish their regular season with a mark of 10 and 1, and then they'd have to win on New Year's night when they'll face the Oklahoma Sooners in the Orange Bowl. So Florida State ranked number three. It's the highest they have ever been ranked, still looking for a possible national championship. So we've got the Seminoles and the Gators coming up from Tallahassee in just a moment. We'll take a preview look at Florida. Gorgeous day in Tallahassee, the pregame pageantry continuing on. It's been a big weekend here. A lot of festivities taking place preparatory to the game and the crowd of 53,000 getting into place. Florida, as you can see, has made a remarkable turnaround. Last season, the first you were hurt there by graduation. Number one worry spot on this football team. We lose three boys who are three-year starters at Florida State. And so now we've got one starter returning, James Harris. We've looked at 12 different defensive backs. Negative wins. Quarterback, a man who took over halfway through this 1980 season for the injured Bob Buco, and his name is Wayne Pease. Just 18 years old, completing 53% of his passes. Last week in the game against Miami, Peace led an 80-yard march on the first drive, hit Tyrone Young, the big 6'6 wide receiver with that pass, good for 34 yards, and then with Young in motion, it was Peace faking the pitch, finding Young for the touchdown, but that did it as far as the Florida scoring was concerned last Saturday in Gainesville. However, Chris Collinsworth, number 21, had a good day. The All-America wide receiver has caught 39 passes this season, including eight last week against the Hurricanes. Chris Collinsworth, number 21. But the big story last week, the end of the game. Miami had it in hand, 28-7. And with one second left, they regained possession and attempted a field goal. As Howard Schnellenberger, the head coach of Miami, said later, he said it was the rudest crowd he had ever seen. They were throwing objects at the bench all day long. And as a consequence, he was going to teach Florida a lesson. They won the game 31-7. And yesterday, I asked Charlie Pell about the end of last Saturday's game. We might have had a two dozen people might be uh, throwing the stuff on the field last week. I was disappointed in that. 62,000 good fans and, you know, just a few bad ones. I think all of us in college football got to be aware of that and uh, be conscious. I don't know many places that it's happened before. And what I'm referring to is Coach Nellenberger uh, alluded to the fact that uh, he was kicking the field goal against our football team to get back at those people behind him. And uh, any way you look at it, that still doesn't make sense. Is that some ammunition for you perhaps next year when Florida faces Miami again? You can count on it. Charlie Pell's reaction to the end of the game last week. His Gators, meanwhile, trying to rebound today and close out the regular season with a mark of 8-3. and three. That's a look at Florida. In just a moment, we'll check out the Seminoles of Florida State. Mark? 
The Florida State University Band. They're known as the Marching Chiefs on the field at Doe Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee with the fanfare. It's an introductory offer. Receive the next eight issues of Inside Sports, a $16 newsstand value for only $12. Save a solid 25%. Call now and receive this great-looking sports bag. And one. The Florida State Marching Chiefs. They expect a new stadium record, and they'll be responding to the Florida State fight song upcoming. Inside Sports, America's fastest-growing sports magazine, covers a side of sports no one else is covering, the inside. Learn why Darrell Dawkins feels he has to smash backboards, and who makes how much in the world of sports. Inside Sports is... Seminoles began with three straight wins then their only loss of the season at the hands of Miami 10-9 since then they have reeled off six consecutive wins keep in mind that last victory over Virginia Tech 31-7 was four weeks ago they've had that much time off let's review some of the highlights of Florida State season we'll pick it up in the Miami game near the end With less than a minute left in the game, Miami was leading Florida State 10-3 when Rick Stockstill, the Seminole quarterback, found his tight end Sam Childers in the end zone to make it 10-9. The Seminoles then went for the victory, lined up for the two-point conversion, but Stockstill's pass was batted away by Jim Burt, and the Hurricanes hand Florida State their only defeat of the season 10-9. The following week, the Seminoles went to the Midwest, moved into Memorial Stadium, Lincoln, Nebraska, for the first meeting ever between Florida State and the Cornhuskers. And the first half belonged totally to Nebraska. At this point, they led 7-0. And Jarvis Redwine, who picked up 145 yards on the day, moves deep into Florida State territory. That set up the Cornhuskers' second touchdown of the first half. The quarterback, number 11, Jeff Quinn, finding number 29, Todd Brown, for the touchdown to make it 14 to nothing. The halftime score was 14 to 3 because it was a tough 30 minutes for Rick Stockstill, as you see his numbers for the season. Stockstill couldn't get anything going in the first half that day at Lincoln. Late in the first half, goes back to pass, gets blindsided and sacked by number six, Sammy Sims. But the second half resurgence was led by Sam Platt, Florida State's leading rusher. Score at this point, 14 to six. Sam Platt taking the pitch, moving to the right side, getting in for the touchdown to make it Nebraska 14, Florida State 12. Shortly thereafter, Bill Capice kicked a field goal to move Florida State into the lead. He's made 21 out of 28 this season. Then late in the fourth quarter, Capice kicks his fourth field goal of the afternoon. And in Lincoln, Florida State leads the score 18-14 at this point, but the Cornhuskers weren't finished. They had it fourth down and goal, late fourth quarter. Quinn trying to pass, but Paul Porowski with a sack. Florida State recovers the fumble. They're able to run out the clock, and the Seminoles win the game. The score 18-14 as Capice kicks four field goals. The next week, Florida State took on Pitt. Highlights of that game when we come back. Color can't wait is ranked third. Now, we have just seen highlights of their upset win in Lincoln, Nebraska on the 4th of October against the Cornhuskers. At that point, Nebraska was unbeaten, and Nebraska is currently ranked ninth in the country. A tough test the following week also for the Seminoles as they took on the Pittsburgh Panthers, who are currently ranked fourth in the country. Pitt came into that game unbeaten and over two seasons had a 14-game winning streak on the night of October the 11th before a full house at Doe Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee. Now, one of the very big men for Florida State, number three, the punter, Ron Stark. He's averaging 45.7 yards a kick. He is third in the country. Early in that game, he got off of beauty. He was a major weapon all evening long here. A 67-yard Stark punt, his longest of the season, pinning Pitt deep in its own territory. 
Ron Stark, number three. Sam Childers, we saw him catch the touchdown pass in the Miami game. He's caught two on the season. The other came here that night against Pittsburgh. Stock still faking, then finding Childers in the end zone for the score as the first half belonged to Florida State. As time was running down at the end of the second quarter, Danny Marino goes back to pass for Pittsburgh, going deep, but his pass is intercepted by number 28, Keith Jones. And with time running out in the first half, Jones runs it back into Panther territory, and with only three seconds left on the clock, Bill Capice then kicks a 50-yard field goal. The third of five Capice kicked that evening, and as the teams went off at the half in Tallahassee, Florida State was out in front, 23-7. But the Panthers were surging in the second half. We're down by only seven. But then Joe McCall fumbles, and Florida State recovers. Kurt Unglob, number 19, who's caught two touchdown passes this season and 10 passes overall, was then the man Stockstill went to. In the left corner of the end zone, finds him for the touchdown to make the score 36 to 22. Mont Bonasor, defensive back for Florida State, a native of Pittsburgh. What a great throw for him, as he is able to pick off a pass against the Panthers. That was the sixth of seven Pittsburgh turnovers that night, as Florida State hands Pittsburgh its only loss of the season, 36 to 22. So some of the highlights from Florida State's 1980 campaign. Coming in today with a record of 9-1. and one. And college football today continues from Tallahassee right after this message. Those were thinking that someday their big rival might be a school like Vassar or perhaps even Smith. Little did they realize that someday they would have a tremendous rivalry with the University of Florida, which is located in Gainesville. The first male was finally admitted to the campus here in Tallahassee in 1946, and then they fielded their first football team in 1947. But it was not until 1958, as I say, that this rivalry did get underway. And of course, in the early confrontations, there was really not a great deal of competition. You can see in 1961, Florida State was able to tie Florida. They regarded that as a major victory. Then they finally won a game over the Gators in 1964. Then Florida started to dominate again through the mid-60s. FSU with a victory in 1967. But then look at Florida, 68, 69, and 70, a victory there. And then through the 70s, and in 1973, Florida won at 49 nothing. But it all turned around in 1977. State with a win, again in 78, again in 79, and so Florida State comes in today having defeated Florida the last three years. And overall, in the 22 meetings between these schools, Florida has won 16, State has won five, and one game ended in a tie. So we're set now for the renewal of the Florida-Florida State rivalry. The Gators and the Seminoles coming up from Tallahassee following this word from our local stations. NBC Sports presents NCAA College Football. From Tallahassee, Florida, it's the Florida Gators and the Florida State Seminoles. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Chevrolet. And your Chevy dealer with Chevette Monza Citation and the new Monte Carlo, Chevy's up ahead for 1981. By Goodyear, makers of Arriva, even its footprint tells you it's different. By Lowenbrow, and you want the taste of a truly great beer, there's really only one. Tonight, let it be Lowenbrow. And by J.C. Penney, more than 1,600 stores throughout the nation. J.C. Penney Auto Centers and J.C. Penney Shop at Home Catalog. We're live from Tallahassee, Florida, as Florida takes on Florida State before more than 53,000 at Doe Campbell Stadium. The Florida Gators on their way to the Tangerine Bowl. They'll be there in two weeks in Orlando to take on Maryland. Florida State ranked third in the country. And of course, they have accepted an Orange Bowl bid to face Oklahoma as the Florida Gators come out onto the field. Seven wins, three losses, including that decision to Georgia when they had the game in hand late, but Lindsey Scott caught a 93-yard touchdown pass from Buck Ballou. Coming seven and three, and here come the Seminoles. Nine wins, one loss. They'll face Oklahoma on New Year's night. Florida State. The flaming spear. And watch this act. 
as they'll take it out to midfield. And you might be penalized for spiking the ball in college football, but not for spiking the flaming spear. The Florida State mascot moving to midfield. And with the upcoming spike, the pregame festivities will be official as the crowd responds at Joe Campbell Stadium. They are in full voice already. spectacle and to think this is a school that was really thinking about giving up football only five years ago all of a sudden they've got an outside shot at a national championship that's how quickly things have turned around here in Tallahassee Al Michaels joined now by Eric Barsegi and quite a spectacle Eric as far as Florida State is concerned we know they're good third in the country nine and one but let me ask you about the layoff they haven't played a game since November the 8th it's been four weeks what effect will that have well four weeks is a long time without a football game and preparation becomes very paramount you don't want your team to peak too soon and uh, I think Bobby Bowden has done an excellent job he gave him 10 days off then he brought him back and brought him back very lightly and then he of course he hopes that they will show here this afternoon. And I think all the accolades that have gone to Bobby Bowden are certainly justified. This man has done an unbelievable job here. You know, three years prior to the time that he came here, they had won but four football games. In the last four years, this man is 38 and six. But yet there is still concern by all of the staff and all the fans here about what effect this will have on the Seminoles, this big layoff. Talking about after effects, what about Florida last week going to the Miami game a lot of people think they have a good chance to win it they look very bad they could be 31 7 will they have a hangover from that well uh, you know they've, they've had a turnaround season too you know a year ago they were 0 and 10 they came back with seven wins they expected to win their eighth ball game against Miami last week it was a mild upset but my observations over my coaching career is that a winning team when their pride is wounded will come back and generally play well the following week and I fully expect the Gators to put on quite a performance here this afternoon. So big interstate rivalry coming up Florida State attempting to defeat Florida for the fourth consecutive time. The Gators and the Seminoles from Tallahassee kick off when we come back. Hey, Florida State will be kicking off to Florida. Bill Capice will put it in the air one of the country's premier place kickers. John L. Brown, Ivory Curry are back deep for Florida. And Capice putting this one into the end zone for the touchback. Curry downing it there. Wayne Peace starting at quarterback for Florida. The impressive freshman. James Jones, former tight end, at one running back spot. They go with Doug Kellum at the other. There's the All-America wide receiver. Chris Collinsworth. You've got Spencer Jackson as the split end, number 89. And we'll also see a lot of Tyrone Young. Now, Florida, in its last several games, has been going with a four-receiver offense. But not now. As they open up, they go with Jones and Kellum. So the first time that they have used this set at the onset of a game in over a month. A flag goes down on the first play as Doug Kellum takes it out to the 27-yard line. And immediately a penalty marker. Looked like Dan Fike uh, might have jumped. And it's a procedure call going against the Gators. To nullify the seven-yard pickup, it'll cost them five and make it first and 15. Joe Wickline is probably the Gators' best offensive lineman. Jim Subers, 248-pound senior. Redmond, 237-pounder. Dan Plonk on the left side at 244, and Dan Fike at 256, a sophomore from Pensacola. Chris Faulkner, the all-conference tight end. At the 15, it's first and 15. And again, it's Kellum. Good hold to the 20, to the 25, out past the 30, to the 35-yard line. Keith Jones, the safety, making the stop. So the Gators, who have been going through the air, have laid open up on the ground today, Ara. A little different look. Charlie Pell told me they had to establish a running game. A beautiful lead block by Jones on the linebacker, number 39, Herring. And, of course, Kellum makes a real fine game. When you do this against the Seminoles, it's not easily done because they're the number one defensive team in the country. Ball just short of the 35-yard line. First and 10. Pickup of three over the right side for Doug Kellum. 
It'll be second down and seven. Up front, you've got Scott. Then the man to watch really is Ron Simmons, the nose guard. Finished ninth in the highest in balloting last year, but he's been hurt a good part of this season. Herring is a fine one. Karowski, the other linebacker. And Butler is as good as most cornerbacks in the country, number 21. Good matchup with Butler working on Collinsworth today. A pair of 21s. Second down and seven. Gators from their own 37-yard line. The fake to Kellum. Peace goes to the air and overshoots Young at 6 feet 6. The pass too high. Von Bonasort covering on play. Wayne Peace given the starters role when Bob Yuko was hurt early in the season. Yuko undergoing knee surgery. Peace doing a very good job with the new offense in particular in that Georgia game. It was quite impressive going with the four wide receivers. It was semi-impressive against Kentucky and not impressive at all last week against Miami. So Florida goes back to basics. Third down and seven from the 37. With Kellum in motion, they give it to Jones on a draw and does not fool anybody. Number 53, Paul Porowski, reading it perfectly, stopping it for the loss and the Gators to kick it. A good series there. Borowski fired that time, anticipating the pass, and they ran a draw play. He picked it up for negative yardage. Number two tackler, Borowski. Mark Dickert, who had been kicking well until recently to kick. Gary Henry is the single safety from Florida State. Dickert getting the kickoff, and a fair catch is called for and made at the 32-yard line by Henry. The Florida State to take over offensively there for their first series. Rick Stockstill is the quarterback. The junior, Sam Flat, is their leading ground gainer. Could go over 1,000 today. Mike Whiting has been hampered by an ankle injury, but he is now healthy. Kurt Bob starting at one wide receiver spot. 22, Hardis Johnson at the other spot. First down, Florida State at their own 32-yard line. Early first quarter with no score. Flat, a little bit of room. David Little, Larry's brother, makes the stop. Up front, you've got Ken Lanier. They recruited him from Columbus, Ohio. Greg Futch, the offensive guard from Ocala. John Madden is the center. No relation. Lee Adams, a senior from Ruskin, number 63. You've got Brannon, 6'4", 260-pounder. And Sam Childers, the tight end. Highlighted him on our pregame show. Caught two touchdown passes this season. Second and seven from the 35-yard line. And it's flat again. Punched up in the middle. Picks up maybe a yard. Dot Lucky was among those to greet him, number 72. The Gators defensively with Golden Gallery Fisher, Dot Lucky, and Val Brown up front. The linebackers, Little and Jackson, are very good. Then you've got Knight, Vaughn, McKeever, and Lilly starting in the secondary. Tim Grove still bothered and not in there at the outset. Third down, seven from the 35. Give it to Flat again as they stay pretty simple. And Flat gets out close to a first down. May have it, depending on where they spot it. Official moving it back just a bit. They look over and they'll bring the chain out. They're going to measure. The tackle was by David Little, number 50. Very fundamental team, the Seminoles. They just run about four or five basic plays. They rely on their defense and kicking. And, of course, when they get in good field position, they'll go ahead and throw it. Florida State scores a lot of points, but they really don't have an explosive offense. They pick up the first down. You just said, Aaron, they stay basic. What's happened this year, of course, with the number one defense in the country, they've had tremendous field position off times, and as a consequence, from time to time, they score 30, 40, maybe even 50 points. Well, the uh, disproportionate uh, yardage that they make, 346 yards a game, and they make th uh, they get on the board 33.5 on an average. That's a lot of points for just that short amount of yardage. First down, Florida State from their own 42-yard line. Again, it's flat as fourth straight carry, and they deck them at the 43-yard line. That hit made by Fernando Jackson, a sophomore from Blountstown, Florida. So Platt, who came into the game with 954 yards, has already carried four times. at the 43-yard line. Good hit there by Jackson. He really flowed over with a play and made an excellent hit. The Seminoles, second down and nine. Florida State has scored 335 points this season, and they've given up only 72. Stockstill on a roll, and going downfield, and complete to Johnson. That 
the 44-yard line. Hardis Johnson making his 18th reception of the season, and the Seminoles have their second straight first down. Well-executed rollout pass. You see Johnson here drives off the defenders. He really puts on good speed here like he's going to go deep. Look at here. Still looks like he's going deep. Now watch him plant and go to the outside after he's got the defense driven off and turn out. The roll-up by Stockstill is perfect, and it's a well-executed play. First down at the Gator 43-yard line. Flat going to the short side of the field, looking for some room, and they whistle it dead. He moves downfield, but he was out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Sam Platt. Florida State, when they go to the air, they do not necessarily go to their wide receivers with any great regularity. Their leading receiver would be the fullback, Whiting, who's caught 24, and Platt is tied for fourth. He's caught 14. Pretty well balanced, but they really, as you pointed out, rely on that defense, but you can see here, the execution offensively uh, wouldn't suggest that they have missed four weeks. Second down, four from the 37-yard line. With Johnson in motion, again, they give it to Platt on the same basic play, and Platt gets stacked up at the 31 as David Little makes the tackle, and it should be a first down. And it's. Look at Mike Whiting, number 27. Whiting bothered by an ankle injury, and the four weeks off have really helped Whiting. It was doubtful he could have played even two weeks ago, maybe last week had they had a game, but now he's almost back to 100%. Well, that's one of the advantages, they said, uh, of the layoff, that they did get Whiting well during that period. First down, Florida State from the 31-yard line. Stock still retreating and getting good protection and growing, and it's batted away. On the far side, Sam Childers was the intended receiver, and Vito McKeever, number 36, who picked off a pass in the Georgia game, batting this one away. McKeever does a great job. You can see the tight end here. Childers will release off the line, and then you'll see McKeever come in here. He's just a freshman. You can see 84 Childers underneath. Now watch McKeever come in here and knock that ball away with good ball reaction right there. Beautiful defense. Second down and 10. Ball at the 31-yard line. Flat. And they smell that one and stop him for no gain. Ron Coleman leading it, number 92. Senior, 6'4", 252-pounder from Tampa, Florida. Bobby Bowden wearing the headset. And we weren't exaggerating when we said earlier that Florida State, really, five years ago, they were thinking about just forgetting football. Well, incredible, and, and the uh, pre-game response by the fans was really, really something. Third and ten from the 32-yard line. Stock still going to Johnson, and Johnson wriggles his way down to the 27-yard line. Very little blocking it in front, and David Little makes the tackle, and he'll be shy of a first down by about six. So Florida State will try to put three on the board. The line of scrimmage is the 27. And upcoming will be a 44-yard attempt by Bill Capiz, who's kicked 21 out of 28 this season, his longest 50 yards. Kurt Unglob holding, and Capiz's kick is good. Number 22 for Capiz, two more, and he'll set a new NCAA record. 8.25 to go in the quarter. 3-0 Seminoles. Here's to good friends. Tonight is kind of special. The building inspector. Hey, what are you guys doing here? I didn't believe you two could build your own house. Yeah, well, don't look. It's not finished. Well, I guess we'll just take our lone brown go. Well, maybe one quick look around. <laughs> when you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brown. What are you going to do when you finish this place? Just what I'm doing right now. They wanted you to build bridges over rivers, but you had other plans. And Monte Carlo. Your car is the strikingly new 1981 Monte Carlo with the economy of a responsive V6 and fresh, clean, sharply sculpted lines. And you'll choose it because you're proud of who you are. You. 
1981 Monte Carlo. A matter of personal pride from Chevrolet. Bill Capice with that field goal now has 22. The NCAA record was just set this season. Obed Ariri of Clemson kicked 23. So Capice coming into the game with 21 and adding one here and has 51 minutes and 35 seconds to get two more. And he'd love that record. He's come out stated as much. That it means a great deal to him. And he'll be kicking off here to Ivory Curry, number 26, the deepest of the three. Capice put his last kickoff in the end zone. This one in the same general vicinity, but not quite as deep, and fielded up at the one yard line to the 10, John L. Brown, and he is stopped at about the 20. John Houston making the tackle for Florida State. So the Gators, the resurging Gators, a team that went 0 10 and 1 last season, and now they're going to the Tangerine Bowl. Trailing 3 0. First and 10 of the 20 yard line. As you can see, it's a perfect day. Temperature 73 degrees. Very pleasant, very light breeze. Tyrone Young lining up as a running back, but now going in motion. Leaving only Jones back there. He's rolling, has a little bit of room, and gets out to the 24 yard line where Porowski makes the tackle. Number 53. Well, it's a little different look uh, offensively. They went to the double slot a week ago. And now they're lining up in a pure pro and, of course, getting to trips by putting the man in motion. They hope to confuse Florida State with that uh, technique. Charlie Pell said this was going to be different. And uh, they did have open receivers that time, but he selected to run the ball. The last graphic illustrating the dominant defense of Florida State. Number one in overall defense. Number one in scoring defense. On second down and six, the pass intended for Young going out of bounds. And it will be third down and six. James Harris, 33, providing the coverage on the play. Florida is a very young team. Piece of freshmen. Most of their starters will be back. Florida State is a very experienced team with a lot of seniors. And next year, if you can believe it, Florida State, as you look at Florida coach Charlie Bell, the Seminoles will play Ohio State, Notre Dame, Pitt, LSU, and Nebraska all on the road. Third down and six. He's looking for Young again and has him for a first down. At the 36-yard line. Tyrone Young played quarterback briefly last year. This year he was suspended at the outset of the season, a disciplinary measure, and Young did not play until mid-season. Keep in mind that he's six foot six as he comes down the field. A little look-in pattern. Peace throws it well. You see how high he is going to get that ball. It's going to make it tough for James Harris, 33, to get up that high. First down, Gators at their own 36-yard line. Florida State leading 3-0 halfway through the first quarter. Out past the 40 to the 44-yard line. Jamie Jones, number 30, sophomore from Pompano Beach, Florida. Converted tight end. Kersey making the stop. Here's the experience difference. You can see it graphically illustrated. You really see it. Look at the senior category. The bottom there, 15 to 7. And that's why Florida State has been so strong. They're a seasoned experienced team. The quality of the players on both sides of the line are about even. The difference, of course, is the amount of play they have. Second down and a short two from the 45-yard line. And Jones gets the two and about three more to the 50. And a fumble at the 50-yard line. And Florida State has it. Reggie Herring. Number 39, the linebacker, coming up with it. After Jones had scrambled to pick up that first down, and the ball coming out late. Let's see if we can see whether or not he was stopped or not. This is Jones, number 30. He rolls off well. He keeps his balance. Yes, it is a legitimate fumble. First down, Seminoles now is Whiting with his first carry of the day, nudges it into Florida territory, getting to about the 48-yard line. It'll be second down, 
and the 48. We're talking to some of the writers that follow Florida State. They say don't worry too much if the team doesn't move the ball well offensively. He says they know the defense will hold. They'll finally get field position. So they don't get all shaken up if they don't make a first down. And you caught a glimpse of Reggie Herring was the man who recovered the fumble by Jones. And on second and eighth, they catch it. Coming to the near side is Platt. And he gets to the 42-yard line. Shy of the first down by two, Fernando Jackson running them out at that spot. Well, you consider the, the quality of teams that Florida State has beaten. You're talking about teams like Pittsburgh and Nebraska. You know that they've had to perform exceptionally well because those are top football teams. Sam Platt has already carried eight times. He's picked up 29 yards. Third down to Florida State at the Florida 42-yard line. State leading 3-0, 540 to go first quarter. at the 41. I don't think he got it. David Little making the tackle. He needed to get inside the 41-yard line. Jackson also helping out. Stock still checking with the bench. They spotted at the 42. They're still shy by a yard and a half. And it's fourth down. Looks like they're going to go, Al. Well, with a defense like that, you know, Bowden's got a lot of confidence in his defense, so he can afford to gamble a little bit, but now maybe he's thinking better of it. He's going to call for a timeout and explore the possibility even further. So timeout called by Florida State. Five minutes, ten seconds remaining in the quarter. He won it down here. Three-nothing, Florida State. We'll be right back. Good year. State electing to punt. Ron Stark punting, and it's down at about the 11-yard line. So after calling timeout, Bobby Bowden deciding to go with his punter, one of the best in the country. As you look at the mentor at Florida State, a man who has an ongoing five-year contract. Every year they renew it. And if Bowden were to leave and it was his own idea, he would pay off the school for five years if he leaves Florida State. That's how much he wanted to sign a contract to stay here, and he thinks forever, and obviously they hope forever right now. I think it's a very happy marriage, I'll tell you. So Stark punting Florida deep into its own territory as the Gators take over at their own 12-yard line. Florida State leading 3-0 with five minutes to go in the first quarter. Keish has time and then throws nowhere. Chris Faulkner was the intended receiver. Well overthrown. Reggie Herring was in the area for Florida State. Covered by Bobby Butler. Peace is one out of four. For 12 yards. Second down 10. Florida from its own 12-yard line. Kellerman Jones are the running backs. Peace on the option. Catching it to Jones, 15, and run out of bounds at the 17-yard line. Nicely executed by Peace, the quarterback. A little reverse pivot down the line option. And they did an excellent job on it. James Jones, in that offense they've been using the last three weeks, and a lot of you have seen two of those games. The Georgia game was televised to most of the country, and the Miami game was on last week in the East and South. Jones has been the sole running back in that set. Kellum has played sparingly since October. Third down and five. They sent Kellum in motion. Peace finding Young out at the 24-yard line, and he draws a crowd, but has the first down. James Harris helping to push him back, number 33. But his forward progress will let a Florida first down out of the 24-yard line. Well, here we see Young again, number 10. They put trips to the opposite, opposite side. They got a six-foot, six-inch receiver for single coverage. And you see, of course, bonus art number 42 and 33, James Harris. Finally get him down with some other help. Tyrone Young, great athlete, played last year on Florida's basketball team. First down at the 25-yard line for the Gators. Jones. Out to 
to the 30, Reggie Herring. Jones, number 30, the ball carrier. Tackled by Reggie Herring, 39. Uh, Charlie Pell earlier in the week, and he was concerned about Jones' availability at turf toe, which is a sprain of a toe as a result of the artificial surface. He's a very tender injury, but apparently he's recovered uh, sufficiently to play in the ball game. James picking up five on that one. A look at Charlie Pell, second down five for his Gators at the 30. Kellum in motion. Peace looking for Young again. Incomplete and Tyrone wants interference. He intends that James Harris and Brandon doesn't get the call. I think we've got a good shot of this, Al. Uh, as Jones comes down, they faked a little look in here. Try to run Harris. They put a little bait on him, but Harris runs with him. Let's see what kind of contact there is there. Well, I'll tell you, they, it's pretty thin there. They could have uh, probably called it. It's a judgment call, and they elected not to call interference. So back to the 30 on third down and five for Florida. Florida State leading 3 0, late first quarter. They send Jones in motion, leaving no running backs. So Peace obviously going in the air and under some pressure and has a man open and finds him at the 40-yard line. It's Chris Faulkner who gets to the 44. The tight end, Faulkner, who has been playing out of a guard spot in that four-wide receiver offense. He's been playing with a pullover jersey the last three weeks, but back at tight end today, number 80. They had no one in the backfield. Everybody was out as eligible receivers, and uh, Florida State could not cover everyone, and you see Chiller's right here wide open. And you see Peace gets it to him before he is sacked. And of course, it's a first down. First down at the 44-yard line. Peace now three out of seven to 33 yards. And Kellum gets it out past the 45 to the 47. Gain of three. Simmons. Simmons was there along with Porowski. With a little bit more than three minutes to go in the first quarter. So Charlie Pell going back to the basics somewhat. As you look at Faulkner, all SEC tight end, but that was based upon his early season performance. He hasn't been eligible to catch a pass of late. But back in more familiar territory today, and he's happy about it. Second down, seven from the 47. Peace going deep, but too long. And good coverage on the play. Commonsworth had no chance. Bobby Butler was back there. And also Keith Jones was covering, double teaming him. Well, elected to go for the home run, but uh, Peace really overthrew the ball. Chris Commonsworth making his mark. Coming up in the record book, the likes of Alvarez, of course, Wes Chandler. Some of the great Florida receivers of the past. Chris earning his own mix. Senior. Should go high on the draft. Third down seven from the 47. Kellum in motion. He's looking for Young. He's out in front. 25 to 20. Tyrone inside the 10. And a touchdown for the Gators. 53 yards to Tyrone Young who broke in in mid-season this year as a wide receiver by catching 10 passes in the Georgia game. He put a great move on Harris. He came down and fakes to the inside, and then breaks to the outside, and we'll see the replay of that right after the extra point. Tyrone Young. I tell you, when you're 6'6", six, six, you are an inviting target. <laughs> Brian Clark to attempt the point after. It's good. So Young catching his third pass of the day. Going into the touchdown, Clark makes it Florida 7 and Florida State 3 with 2 minutes and 31 seconds remaining in the first period. Well, this is a well-executed play. Of course, you see Peace right here. You don't see Tyrone Young. Here he comes into the picture right there. But he has put a move on Harris. Harris thought he was going to run that little look-in pattern again. And he hesitated just momentarily. And this guy's just got too much speed, runs right by him, takes in the ball from Peace, and a great and well-executed touchdown pass. Now, here's the view of it right here. You see him put that move right there. Harris brought the package to go inside on the look-in, and it was too late. 
He made the big mistake, and there was six, six points on the board, and first with the extra point, it's seven to three. So the Florida Gators move out in front, two minutes and 31 seconds remaining in the first quarter at Tallahassee, Gators by four. For whatever you need, take the first. Florida going 88 yards, of course, 53 and one chunk in 231 to go out in front as the Gators take a 7-3 advantage. And keep in mind, of course, Florida State has been averaging, giving up only 7.2 points per game all season, leading the nation in scoring defense. Back deep for Florida State is Larry Harris, number 30. And the kickoff is fielded up at the 17-yard line. Out past the 30, the 35, to the 40 is Ricky Williams with a good run back off the short kick. Have another look now, the touchdown to Tyrone Young. Watch Young put the move on Harris, right? A little look in, and he and it is just a beautiful piece of offensive split and receiving. And he can really jump too. Charlie Bell, Bell told me not only can he run, but he also can really jump. So it's going to be a long afternoon for Harris if he doesn't get some supporting help. A look at Young, new tailback for Florida State. It's Ricky Williams. And Stocksville faking to Williams and then throwing in his receiver, Sam Childers, falling down near midfield. Second and ten. The pressure that time, number 57, Tim Golden, coming in and forcing Stocksville to unload in a hurry. You know, the, uh, there, was some, there was an excellent drive on the part of uh, Florida. They completed two look-ins on crucial third down plays. And, of course, that set up that long touchdown by Tyrone there, Tyrone Young, because he looked like he was going to do the same thing, and then away he goes. Second down and 10, Florida State from its own 42-yard line. It's Williams who ran back that kickoff and stopped there for a pickup of one. Fernando Jackson, number 49, Ricky in there to make the play. Back here to the third down, call it nine. Two minutes to play in the first quarter. Gators on top, 7-3. Now, State coming up for the first time with split backs, and they fan him out into the pattern and then throw over the middle to the tight end, Childers. He was wide open and gets the first down at the 43-yard line. Sending both backs wide, and Childers cutting straight down the middle. Well, Childers delayed, and then he came off. It's beautiful for the zone. You'll see him right here. You see him delaying in there. Childers number 84. Now he slow blocks, and then he comes off the line. The secondary is run off deep in zone coverage. Look at the daylight that he has to run into before they can bring him down. First down state, and Stockstill fumbles, and then gets back to the original line of maintaining possession. Now Brown falling on him there. He was covered by Val Brown. Second down and 10 at the 43 of the Gators. Stockstill, you see, picking up the signal from Young Lob as he came in. Let's see if they go to the air again. Split backs, they generally do. Second and 10. Stockstill keeping and burrowing to the 40 yard line. Lucky making the tackle after a pickup of three. It'll be third down and seven. Soxdale, his first year as the regular here, they went with Jimmy Jordan and Wally Woodham. Alternating. Soxdale taking over, though. He's been the main man running this offense for Bobby Bowden. Well, his dad is a high school coach, and of course, uh, Bobby Bowden told me he's just a winner. He's just a guy that comes up with the big plays. He's cool and poised. Third and seven, a deep drop. The pressure breaks down. He loses the ball, but the play is whistled dead at the 49-yard line. Williams picking it up and advancing with it, but the play was blown dead at the 49. Roy Harris putting the pressure that time on Stockstill. As we get to the defensive side of it, it'll be interesting to see whether or not the Florida State coaches move Butler, Bobby Butler, their great defensive halfback, over to cover the uh, Tyrone... Young. Stark in the front for the second time. His first time 
first kick from just about the same area, and it was downed on the 12. Stark trying to put it into the corner, but it gets to the end zone first. So out to the 20-yard line come the Gators, following the touchback with just two seconds remaining in the first quarter. Florida with the ball, and on top, 7-3. Coming up on Monday Night Football, the gang will be in the Orange Bowl in Miami, the New England Patriots fighting for a playoff spot, trying to rebound after their loss last week to the 49ers, taking on the Miami Dolphins on Monday Night Football at 9 Eastern time. Final play here, first quarter, John L. Brown in at a running back spot, number 14, and it's Brown getting the ball and going nowhere. Well, they continue to cover the receivers, Bobby Butler on Chris Collinsworth, and uh, Harris is still on Young. That's the end of the first quarter at Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee, Florida. After one, Florida leading Florida State, seven to three. Wendy's has the taste. You're looking at Ron Simmons, who is on the bench right now. Ron Simmons had his ankle taped up. He hurt his ankle earlier in the season in the very first game, as a matter of fact, against LSU. They missed a couple of games and has come out for this series. As play resumes in the second quarter, it's second down and 10. Florida from the 20, Tyrone Young. It's out to the 29-yard line. Tyrone, a receiver, he can run, and last year, he hey, played quarterback, quarterback some of the time. He's, he's doing it all, isn't he? The first is a threat when he comes around the corner. He's a quarterback, can throw the football beyond his running ability and receiving ability. Here, he's looking for the possibility of a running pass. He elects to keep it and picks up good yardage. Wayne Peace helping to clear the way. Third down, two at the 28. Double tight end setup. Give it to the eye back, John L. Brown. And he gets the first down after the 35 John yard Brown, line. 14, the ball carrier. Bonus start. And Jones in there to make the stop. Motion by the Gators. Yep. Penalty marker back at the 21 yard line, which may nullify the first down and will. Because of illegal motion. Are tough penalties. You've got a first down and you've had yeah. motion in the backfield and uh, the you come up with third and seven. So instead of the first, it's third down and six. Simmons is now back in the game. After getting his ankle retaped at nose guard, number 50. Third and six. Young in motion. Pitch it to Young. He's looking to throw. Tyrone going deep, and it will be picked off at the 40 yard line by Bobby Butler. Collinsworth, the intended receiver, but Young's pass too long, overshooting Chris by about seven yards. And Butler right there wasn't fooled at all. Well, they tried to set it up with that pitch sweep on the previous play and come back with the same thing. Here you see Collinsworth, number 21, pauses and goes. And the ball is thrown, but it's thrown too long. No open receiver and intercepted. The Seminoles get it back at their own 38-yard line. Florida leading 7-3. Early second period. Williams. A yard, maybe two. Ricky Williams, number 44. Fernando Jackson making the tackle. Fernando Jackson, number 44. Florida defense is playing very well. Reacting well to the ball. Coverage has been good. And it appears that they have a very good offensive game plan. Second down. Call it eight. From the 39. Stockstill. A lot of time, but nobody's open. And he gets out to the 40-yard line. Doc Lucky. Making the tackle from the rear. The protection was good enough, and uh, we just couldn't find an open receiver. You can see the turnover ratio. Both of these teams have been stingy. He's giving the ball away, and of course, the takeaways is terrific. This is why they've won. And of course, both coaches respected the fact 
that they're tough to play against because they play field position football, make it tough for them to teach them. Third down and eight. Stocks go under a lot of pressure, and it's intercepted. The tip pass is picked off by David Little, who gets it back to the 36-yard line. Sam Childers got a hand up, and that's all. And Little puts Florida in good shape. Robin Fisher was the man who came flying through to pressure Stockstill. There you see right here, Little. I think Stockstill would like to have that one back. There was a lot of people around the intended receiver. Over through the ball, it was deflected. And of course, you see Little here, All-American. Great football player, intercepts the ball and puts Florida in great field position. The Gators at the state 36-yard line. First and 10. Kellum. A gain of five to the 31. Kowalski there to make the stop. Tackled by Paul Kowalski. Well, they're establishing that running game that Charlie Pell was interested in doing. He felt that they just hadn't run the ball effectively enough, and unless you pick up four and five yards on the first downs, why, that's very helpful to the offense. Second down, five. Florida at the Florida State 31 yard line. 12 minutes to go in the half. Jones getting close to a first down. Out of bounds near the yardstick. James Harris covering on the play. Charlie Pell turned the program around at Clemson. Before that, he was at Jacksonville State, that school located in Alabama. Did a fine job there. Now in his second season at Florida. Winless last year and seeking his eighth win this year. It is third the shy of a first down. Third down, less than a yard. At the 26. Two tight ends. Give it to Kellum, and he nets the first, getting to the 23-yard line. You know, Al, one of the strategies here that uh, is very effective, of course, with Florida is, I'm sure... Time. Prime Minister Bacon. ...time in defending the double slot and anticipating nothing but pass, pass, pass. And here they come out, Florida comes out, and they work on their running game, and they've been doing it effectively. So that change of pace, plus the layoff, may have had some effect on this team. I'm talking about Florida State. Florida at the 23-yard line. And again, it's Kellum. And he's driven back, but they'll give him forward progress just about to the line of scrimmage. Do you think that Bowden really felt that Florida would come out with the same offense they've been using in the last three weeks, Arrow, or do you think that he knew that Florida might go back to more of the basics? Well, I, I no, I don't think he thought they was going to go back to this running attack, which Pell wanted to establish. I think that he felt that they would come out in some different formations because they had done a lot of that, but anticipated trips one way or the double slot and basically the concept of four receivers and throwing it. Second down, 10 to the 23-yard line. That's Kellum going in motion. And they give it on the draw to Jones, and he's wrapped up on a great play by Porowski, who underwent an appendectomy earlier in the season and then literally played in the game 10 days later, just for one play, and then came back almost full-time 17 days after the surgery. He's really, a, he's really a tough kid. Watch him fire here, number 53. He comes right through the gap. It's a little delayed draw. He smells it out beautifully. You see Jones getting the ball on the draw from Peace, and here's Porowski coming right in before he has any chance at all. And as Al pointed out, he had a napendectomy, and uh, I think that Bobby Bowden had to run him off the field. I think it was 10 days afterwards. He was out in full pads wanting to play. <laughs> so Porowski makes the play here. Florida is going to take a timeout with third and 17 upcoming. 10 minutes to go to the half. Florida by four. Seconds remaining in the half. Al Michaels and Aaron Parsiki is with you from Tallahassee. Florida has it third down, 17 at the Florida State 30. The Gators lead 7-3. And here they go on the offense they've been using of late with Young taking the pitch here. Tyrone's not going to throw it this time. Turns the corner inside the 25 and run out of the 22-yard line by Keith Jones. <laughs> He's some kind of an athlete, isn't he? <laughs> He's doing it all. Here it is. He just uh, a sweep again. Look at the way he's holding that ball. It's a little dangerous. Got to put it away. There he is. He puts it away. He gets hit. But for 6-6, you know, he can really stride out. So on fourth down, they'll attempt the field goal from the 28-yard line. It'll be a 38-yard effort by Brian Clark. And the kick. 
streak is long enough and good. So Brian Clark with four points on the day. An extra point. And a field goal here coming with 9.55 remaining in the second quarter. Well, I think Stockstill, as I pointed out, uh, would like to head that ball back after he threw it. Is, uh, he's generally, his judgment is excellent, but I think on that occasion, uh, he made an error there, throwing right into trouble, and of course the interception that led to this field goal. It's the first half of our NCAA doubleheader, and the second half, the great rivalry continues on. One that is here, of course, to the heart of my colleague today, Notre Dame and USC from the Coliseum to wrap up the regular season. Well, there'll be 90,000 or plus in that stadium again. I know what it feels like. It's something. SC trying to avoid a third straight loss. And of course, for the Irish, it's Dan Devine's final game in the regular season. Larry Dan, Harris, of course, number 30 is deep for the Seminole. To George on New Year's Day. 10-3, Florida on top as Brian Clark kicks off. Larry Harris fielding at eight yards deep, but not coming out with it. He'll put it down to the 20, and stay trailing by seven. We'll start from there. There is. Wayne Peace, the freshman on the young Florida team that has been molded by Charlie Fell. Winless last year. Looking for their eighth win of this season and one more still to go because they'll face Maryland in the Tangerine Bowl in Orlando in two weeks. Certainly looking good thus far in this game. The Seminoles at the 20. First and 10. Scott still. Incomplete out of the 25 intended for Sam Childers. Covered on the play by Tim Golden, number 57. The pass was intended for Sam Childers. Incomplete. Covered by Tim Golden. Second down and 10. Ricky Williams in again at the eye back spot. Flat started. But Sam right now on the bench. to the 26, so he turns no gain into a six-yard pickup as Kyle Knight finally makes the stop. I actually think that he missed the hole. The, the hole was off to his right, and he cut it back a little too soon. He did a great job of running. Let's see if we can see the hole. He we'll to the left here of Williams, and he cuts it clear back inside. Well, we can't quite see it. I thought he ran into traffic, but watch this hard running and determination. Shaking tacklers loose, picks up yardage that he had no business getting. Only a good running back to do that. Florida State at its own 26-yard line. Whiting bumping his way forward and just about to get to the 30, as you can see, but maybe a little shy. Remember, the nose of that ball has to be right on the stripe, and if it's not, it'll be fourth down, and they are shy by about half a yard. So Florida State unable to pick up the first and forced to kick as Stark comes in. Stark, first-team UPI All-American. 45.7, his average coming into the game. That was third best in the country. He started to play today. Tremendous kick. A bomb fielded at the eight-yard line. Out to the 15, to the 20, and to the 23 is Ivory Curry. 62-yard kick for Stark. His best of the year, 67 against Pitt. 8.24 to go, first half at Tallahassee, Florida 10, and Florida State 3. In parcel service in Mountain View, California, runs their Chevy Chevette fleet 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. So they know Chevette's durable enough to stay in service. To be in any business today, you've got to cover a lot of territory. And that's one of the reasons you'll see Chevy Chevette working all over the country. And starring in the Joey Chick with Thrill Show, the 1981 Chevy Chevette, one tough son of a gun. Mr. Goodwrench, can I get an oil change filter and lube job in a hurry? Sure, I'll do it while you wait. Mr. Goodwrench knows you don't have time to waste, so he can offer while you wait service on many popular jobs. And he has the special GM tools, GM training, and genuine GM parts available to back it up. All done? That was fast. 
Well, time is money, Sam. Great GM feeling. Where Mr. Goodwrench works. With genuine GM parts. Tallahassee, Florida, where the Gators are leading the Seminoles 10 to 3. And Florida with the ball at its own 23 yard line. First and 10. Wayne Key sends Tyrone Young in motion. And Keeps and gets to the 26 yard line. And Karasi is here again, number 53. Sometimes that little play will just pop out of there. It's a delay sneak. You see, Peace will step to his left and let the linebackers flow and then try to pop the ball squarely on the 25 yard line. But uh, the Seminoles were up to it. Second down, seven. Florida from the 26 yard line. Less than eight minutes to go in the half. Gators ahead, 10 3. Brown in motion. Peace pitching to Jones this time, skirting the sideline and out of bounds near the 30 yard line. Flag is down at the 24. There is a flag on the play. So a penalty marker is down. By the way, we get a report now. Sam Platt has not been in for the last two series. He has a shoulder injury. And the report from the Seminole bench is that it's doubtful that Platt will return today. So their leading ground gainer, a man who carried nine times early for 29 yards and had hoped to go over 1,000 today, is probably on the shelf for the rest of the afternoon as you see the penalty marks off against Florida. A little procedure on the wide. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. You know, uh, Al, all he needed was 46 yards, Sam Platt, to hit the 1,000-yard mark and 166 yards to be the leading ground gainer ever in the history of uh, Florida State. It's really too bad. Second down, 13 from the 20-yard line. Peace pitching it to Jones, and he gets out to the 27. Gary Fudge and Bobby Butler converging on the tackle. Having, uh, Florida's having success with the option play both ways, down the line option. Peace comes down the line and is doing a good job. He waits till the last minute, deals it off, and uh, they've made the positive yard yards on it. The Gators, ranking second in the conference this year, going through the air. Now Peace with third and a long five coming up. Wants to take a timeout. That's the second spent by Florida in the half with 7.09 to go. The score, the Gators 10 and the Seminoles 3. Dope Campbell Stadium, Tallahassee, Florida. Packed, 53,000 looking on. Florida with third down and five. At its own 28-yard line, John L. Brown goes in motion. He's pitching it to Jones. Jones looking for the first down and gets it to the 34-yard line. Herring and Bonasort. Converging on the tackle. Okay, Tyrone Young made a very fine block and allowed him to become a first down. He was split out to the side and comes right down the field and makes an excellent block. Here's Scott, number 54, playing the option. He's responsible for the quarterback. Look at him hit Peace right here, but not before he deals the ball off. But Tyrone Young made a great block to, to, to uh, create the first down. First down, Gators at the 34. Jones again, and he gets to the 45. And Young laying down another block as Bonasort made the tackle. That'll be another first down as Jones gets a little more than 10. I tell you, Jones is a good-sized youngster, 6'2", 223, and uh, he gets ahead of steam up. He can punish you. Well, certainly the Gators have come in here with a much improved running game from a week ago. Florida has not thrown a pass in this quarter. Keese has thrown nine today, all in the first period. First and ten at the 45-yard line. John L. Brown gets to midfield. John L. Brown, number 14. You've got to keep in mind also that Florida is doing this against the number one defensive team in the country. Because they've already gained 188 yards against this Florida team and 193 now with that last play. And Florida State was only giving up about 200 yards a game. Coming into this game only three times this season has the opposition gone into double figures against Florida State. Miami got 10, Nebraska scored 14, and Pitt 22 with the Cornhuskers and Panthers both losing. Second down, five from midfield. Peace pitching it back and back at the 
48-yard line, Gary Futch and Ron Simmons converging to stop Calvin Davis, number 33, on his first carry of the day. Well, as we you see here, uh, Florida, 18 points or less to win the NCAA scoring defensive title, and they've already given up 10, and have given up 193 yards. You know what we said at the top of the show when we started to talk about it, that their pride was wounded last week against Miami, a, a traditional rivalry, and... Uh, they generally bounce back. A winning team generally will bounce back and play well the next game. And certainly it's evidence here thus far in the first half. No doubt with five minutes and seven seconds to go in the half. Third down seven from the Gator 48-yard line. And a flag goes down. Delay of the game. That'll cost them five. Florida. Multiple formations and they signal in the play. So you're prone delay. to lead to a delay. The offense, third down. And a combination of the open formations and motion and uh, substitutions of the personnel, uh, you're pressing that 25 second clock. Spotted at the 44. Third down, a tad more than 11. Peace going back to Young over the First down. Bonus short, making the tackle. Beautiful execution by Peace. Came down the line like he was going to run an option to the wide side of the field. Oh, and turned. And the first down was line. right over as a result. Man. Here's Young, isolated. He comes down. Everybody thinks it's going to be a run. Now you can see he's away from James Harris. And here's the ball with no one between Young and the ball. First down, Gators at the 37-yard line. John L. Brown slipping and sliding and getting to the 31-yard line. Porowski in on the stop. Well, this certainly is a surprise the way they are able to move the ball on the ground against this top defensive team. Especially so in light of the fact they have not used this basic offense in over a month. It's only a passing attack since the Georgia game. Second down, three from the 31. They give it to Brown again. And Brown gets to about the 27. Very close to a first down. Monsick making the tackle. John L. Brown, number 14. Good running back, though he would be listed as second team, at least coming into the game. And another converted quarterback. Yep. Everybody, it seems, on the Florida <laughs> roster <laughs> plays quarterback. quarterback. That's and one right. time or another. There's some great athletes out of high school who play quarterback and fullback, I'll tell you. After the measurement, it's a first down for Florida. The Gators at the Seminole 27-yard line. Florida, about a two-touchdown underdog, leading 10-3 with 3.40 to go in the half. John L. Brown hasn't been playing a whole lot for Florida. Miami recruited John L. They were concerned about him last week. So he figured almost not at all. How was it things that worked out? <laughs> well, Willard Marshall was down there. He got tangled up with one of the defensive backs, and I thought there might be a big penalty, but uh, the official just broke it up and sent him back to the huddle. Second down and seven from the 24-yard line. Brown gets to about the 20. Jonel Brown, the ball carrier. Shy of the first by close to three. It'll be third down ball and three at the 20. Clock running with two minutes and 35 seconds remaining in the first half. as Doug Kellum is stopped at the 19-yard line. They need to move it almost to the 17, so it'll be fourth down and a little less than two coming up for the Gators. Well, I would be inclined with a 10-point lead to... Well, I think he's going to go for the field goal here. Or this would be an excellent spot 
for a gadget play off the field goal or an excellent place to go ahead and take the risk to go for the touchdown. Because when there's 13 points on the board, you know, two touchdowns, of course, and, and the extra points will beat you. But they're only, let's see, 10 to 3 right now, 7-point lead, and they're going to go for the 10-point lead. 36-yard field goal attempt is spotted at the 26-yard line, and the kick is good. So Brian Clark has been perfect today. One extra point, two field goals, and with 146 to play in the first half in Tallahassee, Florida leading Florida State 13 to 3. This caused big trouble. What'd you get me? What? Brian Clark will kick off with a fly to Gators. He has just given the Gators a 10-point advantage.